This video is for educational purposes only, and only competent persons should attempt this installation. Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a light that is controlled by a pole chain to a light that is controlled by a switch. Because this job will include running a cable from the light box to the switch box, I will also go over the NEC codes that govern how this cable is run. In my example, I have an open wall to work with, but sometimes it's not necessary to open up the wall and you can just fish the cable from the light box to the switch box behind the drywall or plaster. There are actually two separate codes that govern how a cable is secured when working with an open wall and how a cable is secured when fishing it behind existing drywall. We'll need to select where we would like the new switch to be located, what switch we would like to use, and we'll need to choose a switch box. I'll locate my switch close to my light so that the work will be easy to follow. Here are a few of the switch choices. This is the Leviton Decora switch, and this is the Leviton Decora Plus switch. You can see how much more heavy duty the Decora Plus switch is, plus it offers the back wire system, which is an excellent clamping system. The Decora switch has a backstabbing system, which I don't recommend. Here is the Leviton Smart Switch with Wi-Fi technology. You can control your light with your smartphone with this one. Notice how much larger it is than the other switches. This is the Enerlite's programmable timer switch. It's also large and it includes its own pigtails. Notice both the Leviton Smart Switch and the Enerlite's timer switch require neutral wires. This brings us to our first code point, which is that our new switch box must have a neutral in it. Here we are at the 2020 NEC code, Article 404.2C. Switches controlling lighting loads. It says the grounded circuit conductor. Now you need to know that the grounded circuit conductor is the neutral. The white neutral wire goes to the grounding bus bar in a main panel. So that is grounded. The ungrounded circuit conductors are, in our example, the black and the red wires, which go to a circuit breaker and are not grounded. So it says the grounded circuit conductor, they're talking about the neutral, for the controlled lighting circuit shall be installed at the location where switches controlling lighting loads that are supplied by a grounded general purpose branch circuit serving bathrooms, hallways, stairways, or rooms suitable for human habitation or occupancy as defined in the applicable building code. So basically, a switch box needs to have a grounded circuit conductor, which means that a switch box needs to have a neutral. There are five exceptions listed out right here, and we went through these very carefully in a previous video. However, these five exceptions do not pertain to our particular example. Next, you'll need to select a switch box for your new switch. These are new work boxes and these are old work boxes. The old work boxes don't need to be attached to a stud because they have little flaps which attach directly onto the back of the drywall by tightening screws. These are the new work boxes. This is the Carlin B120A, which has 20.8 cubic inches of interior space. And this is the Carlin B122A, which has 22.5 cubic inches. I recommend the larger box so that you can accommodate the larger switches now or in the future. This is the Carlin B114R old work box, which has 14 cubic inches, and this is the Carlin B120R, which has 20 cubic inches of space. Once again, my recommendation is for the larger box. This is my Klein voltage tester, and the first thing I'm gonna do is test out the tester, make sure it's working fine, you see that it is. 
Now I'm going to turn off the circuit breaker. I'm going to test it again. And you see there's, there's no electricity in this line coming to the light. Okay, now that I have this open again, I'm going to put my voltage tester in here again and just do a double check, make sure there's no hot wires and there's not. So now that the old light is off, we see that we have a 12-2 with ground bringing energy, electrical energy into the box. You have two conductors, the black and the white, and you have the ground wire. So for the electrical box, I chose the B122, uh, which has 22.5 cubic inches of space. For the cable going from the light box to the switch box, I'm going to use a 12-3 with ground. That's three conductors and one ground. And that'll, that'll be two hot wires. These will be making a switch loop. And then this will bring the neutral into the box that is necessary by code. And this is our ground wire. Okay, I have run a 12-3 with ground Romex cable from the light box to the switch box. And I've put a Romex staple right here. And I'll show you the code having to do with staples. Uh, both for open wall work and when you fish this wire uh, behind drywall. Here we are at article 334.30, securing and supporting. Non-metallic sheathed cable shall be supported and secured by staples, cable ties listed and identified for securement and support, or straps, hangers, or similar fittings designed and installed so as not to damage the cable at intervals not exceeding 1.4 meters, that's four and a half feet, and within 300 meters, that's 12 inches, of every cable entry into enclosures such as outlet boxes, junction boxes, cabinets, or fittings. Flat cables shall not be stapled on edge. Okay, here we are at 314.17. This is an exception that does apply to us where non-metallic sheath cable or multi-conductor type UF cable is used with single gang boxes not larger than a nominal two and a quarter by four inches which is what we're using mounted in walls or ceilings and where the cable is fastened within eight inches of the box measured along the sheath and where the sheath extends through a cable knockout not less than a quarter inch securing the cable to the box shall not be required. So our particular box has no way to secure the cable. So that means that you have to secure um, the cable within eight inches of the box as measured along the sheath. So this cable coming from this light box needs to be secured within 12 inches of the light box. And then it needs to be secured at least every four and a half feet as it's running to the switch box. And when it gets to the switch box, you need to secure it within eight inches along the sheathing because of the kind of switch box it is. Here we are at article 334.30b. Unsupported cables, non-metallic sheath cable, shall be permitted to be unsupported where the cable, one, is fished between access points through concealed spaces in finished buildings or structures, and supporting is impractical. So if you're fishing this cable behind your drywall, it doesn't have to be supported at all. Here's my new light. And first I'll start with the grounds. First I have the ground that comes from the source coming to the light box. And it goes right there. And then this is a little ground to go to the cross piece right here. And then this ground uh, goes down here to the switch box. So I'll put that right in there, click it down. Okay, and then I have the ground that goes to the light itself. Okay, here's the ground that goes to the cross piece. We'll put that around the nut in a clockwise fashion. Crimp it. Tighten it down. Now I'm going to work on the neutrals. This is uh, a three-connector lever nut. I'll put one in here, clamp it down, put
put one neutral in here, clamp it down. Okay, that leaves me one space for the neutral that goes to the light. So th this is not completed. So we're gonna jump over to the hot wire. The hot wire coming from the electrical source is right here. We call that the line wire. So I'm gonna connect that to this black wire that goes down to here. You see, this is part of a switch loop. This and this and this, this and this and this and this are part of a switch loop. So I'm gonna take this black wire connect it to this lever nut right there. So that one's done. It can go in the back of the box. Normally I would hook up the uh, neutrals and the hot wire at this time with the light, uh, but in this case I'm going to wait so that you'll be able to see the wires better. Okay, so I'm going to select the Leviton Decora Plus switch. Uh, this is an excellent switch. It costs a little more, but I think it's well, well worth it. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the ground wire. The next thing I'm going to do is put a lever nut on the neutral wire. Now this particular switch does not take a neutral but it, we have the neutral in here both for code and for our convenience if we'd like to put one of those the timer switch or the or the smart switch or a switch like that in there later so the, the neutrals in the back of the box okay so here's our two switch loop wires okay so one goes right here Tighten that, up, tighten that up good and secure. If you prefer to go around the nuts, you can with, with this switch. But it has a, a really nice clamping system back here. Okay, so then we'll take the, the second switch loop wire. Okay, that's a really good solid connection. Now I'll take some black electrician's tape and go around the switch a couple times for safety. Okay, so now we're back to the light and we're going to hook up the neutrals. So this is twisted together real nicely. We'll put it in the lever nut all the way, click it down. And you can always check on the back of the lever nut, make sure these are pushed all the way in uh, before they're clamped down. So the neutrals are done. So now I'm going to hook up the hot wires. We put this in there all the way, click it down, put this all the way in there, click it down. So that's it. We got the grounds, the neutrals, and the hot wire. So now we just gotta push it all back into the back of the box. So the lights all hooked up, ground to ground, neutral to neutral hot to the hot switch loop wire. Okay, I'm gonna turn the circuit breaker back on and try it out. All right, so now we have a properly switched light. So that's how you do it. I'll put links in my video description for the Wego lever nuts in the two connector, three connector, and five connector sizes, as well as the assortment pack. The Wego connectors are UL listed and are rated for 450 volts, 32 amps, and they are rated for continuous service at 221 degrees Fahrenheit. The Leviton Decora Plus single pull switch, the Leviton Smart Switch, the Enerlite Timer Switch, Carlin B120R Old Work Boxes, Carlin B122A new work boxes, Gardner Bender NM staples, Southwire Romex 12-2 with ground NMB cable in the 250 and 1000 foot lengths, and Southwire 12-3 with ground NMB cable. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.